Hello and welcome to Films and That. My name is Rob Turnbull. My name is Sam Hall. Today we are looking at L'Argent by Robert Bresson. So uh, what made you pick Bresson's L'Argent? Well, it was actually recommended by a user on, on YouTube. So they recommended that we do it. So here we are. Thanks for that. <laughs> a forged banknote causes a domino effect of greed and desperation that causes the downfall of an innocent member of society. This review contains spoilers. So this film, made by Robert Bresson, it was uh, based on a Tolstoy novel, wasn't it? Yes, the, the forged coupon uh, novella, uh, which begins as, I think it's actually, there's multiple characters within it, um, and that sort of follows through throughout. And uh, Bresson has picked out one of a specific character in this and then given them a, a French twist. Yeah. And where this differs from Tolstoy, Tolstoy's story was in two parts. Mm. The first one was a downward spiral of destruction and evilness. And then the second part was retribution of how you can have good domino effects. But Bresson chose to ignore the second part and just made it very depressing. Hilarity ensues. So it's about uh, a schoolboy who wants money, but his, his, far, his wealthy father doesn't want to give him any money. So he forges a banknote. Oh, where he's he's in he's encouraged to forge a banknote, isn't he, by a friend? By a friend, yeah. yeah. But then he spends that banknote to get some change so he can spend it somewhere else. Then the teller realizes that it's a forged banknote. Her boss is annoyed that she's accepted this, so then he decides to palm it off on someone else, and just keeps going. You think you're just going to keep on snowballing, don't you? Mm. And it's going to go um, one person to the next, to the next, to the next. Um, mm. But then we do end up following this one character, and that's where it all goes downhill. Yeah, because uh, yeah. <laughs> basically the point of the film is how like one seemingly childish act can then have real consequences mm. and how no one at any point in that chain did the right thing and they all were out to screw someone else over. They all were greedy or they didn't want to be taken advantage of so they took advantage of someone else mm. and just kept getting out of control. Yeah. What I'll do Alors, messieurs, excusez-nous de vous avoir dérangé. Allons. The first 20 minutes of the film is about dated accounting practices. <laughs> S'en fout. I did like how everyone was a scumbag, because you kind of expect people, oh yeah, that, that person's going to kind of do the right thing. No, no one does the right thing. Yeah, the yeah. authorities aren't unsympathetic and they're partly responsible for the tragedy that they cause. There is like a, a little girl in it who barely has what, like one line or something. She's probably the only innocent character. Oh, the guy's daughter. The, yeah, the children are always yeah. innocent, aren't they? Um, <laughs> but you've quite a stretch to make her a prick. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it happen. <laughs> At this point, we should introduce Yvonne, the um, protagonist. He's a working class man who obviously has an inkling of something antisocial about him. You always hear about people who are horrible in school, bullies in school, who grew up to be productive members of society and not, you know, not unpleasant or particularly, but they've always got that there, that capability of, mm. of sociopathy of doing something horrible. And in this case, the only sort of inkling that we get that this guy is capable of that is that he tries to spend these forged banknotes he's been given. Alors rendez-les, moi j'irai les rendre au monsieur qui me les a donnés et qui m'en donnera d'autres. Je ne te les rendrai pas. De quel droit vous les gardez Tu es l'un de ces petits malfrats qui répondent partout la fausse monnaie. Um, I want to talk about that scene actually, because there's a very odd shot when he, he kind of grabs the man and pushes him away. But it, it kind of lingers on his hand, and I think oh, that is that's a Bresson uh, trait of of he seems to not show you what you want to see and show you too much of what you don't want to see. <laughs> that seems to be the way for things. He he lingers on everything. I think the idea is that it's that, that literal sense that every frame is a painting. Every frame he wants you to linger on. So every scene where money is being exchanged, you don't just see a quick shot of money. You see all the money. There we go, counting it. Mm. There we go. You've seen it all. You've mm. seen it all counted. You know, 
Yeah. But um, conversely, though, it does it does move along at a quite fast pace, doesn't it? It kind of ranges yeah, through the plot. I think that's because there's just so much there. Mm. Um, it's funny, but he's yeah, he's created a film that um, there's a yeah, there's so much in there, but it still feels meandering. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's really slow paced, but also fast at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> so you like you blink and you miss certain things, and other times you're just like what. Why, why is that there? So it's... Why are we lingering on this thing that it appears in name? Mm. Um, but that is his style. Mm. It felt like each scene was written one after the other, but I guess that wasn't the case if it was a, if it's based on a novel. I have heard I've heard Bresson talk about how he um, he writes a script and then in his head he sort of like trashes that script in a sense mm. and that he feels like the, the the story starts again when you start filming and he completely approaches it in a different way and then again when editing as well. Yeah, so yeah, I've I've heard him say that as yeah. well. He likes to be surprised, like the painter doesn't know what his next bush stroke is going to be. But I've also read that this film apparently was the first one where he felt like when he was making it, it was intuitive, mm. intuitive. Yeah. Um, so he almost felt like he knew exactly what to do. And I might argue that that's why it's not as enjoyable as his other films, because <laughs> it does feel intuitive. It does feel like another day at the office. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Like there's no for me there. anyway. Almost. Oh, that could just be because it's so nihilistic and fatalistic. Like I said, there's no sympathy for the characters. That's... Or even if you are sympathetic. You aren't, you know, like five minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> Part of it could just be the effect of it, the fact that it's in colour and not in black and white. Yeah, were you saying that things in black and white at that point, they looked a lot better because the technology had advanced more than the colour film stock had advanced, do you think? The shadows and that have a, have a more artistic look to them. Mm. And they seem to bring out more in a film like this with this kind of perspective, where it almost comes across to me like a, a student film. <laughs> Almost. Yeah, I know that's such I, I an insult that. for such a, you know, intelligent guy. I, I'm not. I, I don't think that is the case. But that's just to my eyes. That's kind of how it comes across. I know what you mean. A lot of the shots are all just very centre frame. There doesn't seem to be a lot of thought to the choreography of, of the blocking and things like that. Mm. But then is, there must be a point to it. Yeah, it's it is it is artistic choice. That's why he doesn't hire famous actors. But doesn't that bring a certain sense of realism to it? Is that what he's going for? I think that is what he's going for. I did like the character of Lucian, though. He's he's like a criminal mastermind. Yeah, he? um, he's also is he, he ends up in prison as well. Um, he starts off as uh, an innocent who's duped to doing something that is wrong. So ultimately, what is the point of the film? I think that was one of the notes I wrote down, which is what's the point? Um, all of his films, all of them. There's the thing that's that central is that there is a, a theological perspective because he is a very very strict Christian. He usually has a redemption arc, except yeah. it, the only redemption aspect of this film is that he, uh, the character, after doing the most horrible things, after being put upon, kills people and then gives and himself up. The only redemption aspect is that he gives himself up. Then why would he cut out the redemption from the Tolstoy novel? And that's the big question. <laughs> That, um, Do you think he's just got I, cynical? That's what it age? feels like, doesn't it? If it was really nihilistic and cynical, yeah, it does. It mm. really does. And maybe that's his like final fuck, fuck you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm off for a guy who um, is a very devout Christian. Yeah, there's still there is still a message, I guess, but it's just because the, the a lot of the time these are such these are weaknesses, aren't they? These are weaknesses that people show. Um, but everyone shows weaknesses. Everyone, you know, everyone has a moment of weakness. But it's also about doing the right thing at a particular point. There's a point when the schoolboy, his mother finds out that he's been doing this forgery. Mm. And you think at that point she's going to scold him and she's going to make things right. But then she just goes, no, don't tell your dad and I'll go pay them off. You have this preconception of what these people are going to do. Mm. And the store owner as well. You think because he's responsible and he runs a business, he's not going to then start handing these forgeries out to other people. But... But he does, and it's about the evil people do because they're desperate or because they feel they've been taken advantage of. And it's, it's kind of like a parable, you know, like in 
in the Bible or something. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I think that's what you've nailed it there, haven't you? It's a parable. Yeah. Mm. Of kind of, this is what happens if you do these evil things, you know. It might not even affect you, but then it affects your society or community or other people. And just, I guess, kind of understanding how these things happen, how people murder. There's a moment um, right towards the end when the woman, this widow who's um, sort of adopted Yvonne, um, knowing that he's a villain, but um, she decided to look after him to try and redeem him. Mm. And there's a moment when she's taking out some, is it soup or something or a coffee to him? I think it's coffee, yeah. Yeah, and it spills on her arm. And that's like a, a sort of a prelude to what's going to happen later to her. An act of kindness has led to this mistake. You're going to get burned. Yeah. But if it's a parable, then why, what does that say? You know, don't take in strangers, don't, have, don't try and help people. I think that it's grander than that, mm. you know, it's, it's, it's not so specific. I think it's more about uh, taking responsibility and being intelligent about how you apply kindness, um, mm. you know. So it's, it's more like, it's about, about duty, maybe. Yeah, mm. and don't go and do a bank job just because you've not got any money. Yeah. Just get another job. Yeah. Um, easy money again Walter White and Breaking Bad that kind of thing there's not a lot of dialogue in it really is there well, yeah or if it is it's it's almost comes across as so stilted that you know I feel like there's there's always subtext and there's always re about reading between the lines mm. um, when he goes into the prison there's a very quick shot of the prison gates and there's, they're, they're sort of flaky the house he goes to stay at has a messy garden it looks like a pretty old house you know there is a lot of visual storytelling, I think, and there's a lot of it's it's a lot of there's minimalism, but there's um, there's a it's a kind of sense that the whole world is decaying, maybe in some way. Yeah, mm. yeah, which reflects what's going on in the film, I guess. Mm. Yeah, everything looks more and more depressing. It's all Norbert's fault, really, isn't it? Yeah, little shit. Yeah, mm. prick. I think it's, it's that monobrow that does it for me. <laughs> you know he's evil. It's dangerous territory, that. <laughs> <laughs> we looked evil. <laughs> His eyes were too close together. Yeah, it's very difficult to find a, a kind of something to take away from it, though. Well, well you so mean impressive. because of the ending? Because of the ending? Yeah, because there's no, there is no redemption. Mm. It's very linear, so this downward spiral starts and then it ends, mm. and there's no there's no hope really. It's a very hopeless film, which makes it a difficult watch because there's no moment you go, oh, you know, here we go, now we're back, now we're going again. You know, there's no point that draws you back in because it just keeps on getting worse and worse and worse. Yeah, and you become because people do stupid and stupid things. Mm. So like going and doing a bank job, that for me kind of lost me from his plight you know because mm. up until that point he's even when he's like resorting to violence in mm. the in the coffee shop or whatever you understand why he's doing that but then the bank job was just kind of don't, don't do that you know what's going to happen it's more about communal growth i think mm. and not just thinking about yourself all the time mm. yeah okay nailed it I wouldn't say I'm an aficionado, but I've seen quite a few Bresson films. And all of them, even when they are depressing, they still have, um, there's still a lot of heart in them. And I feel like I really take something from them and I find them moving. But so it was this one, I went, oh, that was very moving. Uh, normally I go, this, uh, that was very moving. This one, I kind of went, Ugh. You didn't like it then, I guess. Um, I think, I think I'm sort of like, Despite myself, because I do really like Bresson, so uh, yeah, I, I have to sort of um, begrudgingly admit that I don't enjoy this one that much. I'm not saying it's not got something to say. I'm not saying there aren't intell intellectual, really good artistic moments in it. I'm just saying um, I can't quite get into it. Yeah, there's no payoff, which would mm. be would be more satisfying. Mm. But. Um... I really liked the first bit of it when it was an ensemble piece. Well, you felt, it felt like maybe if it can continued with the causality kind of, you know, the butterfly effect mm. subject and maybe some, did something clever with that instead of just 
the downward spiral just going constantly go down. Well, I, I think they should have left the uh, part two from Tolstoy and have an upward spiral. All that as well. And have um, <laughs> how you can be redeemed and all this. I think that would have been much more interesting. Mm. But I am thankful it's only only like an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that is its saving grace. Thank you.